Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today is an exciting one because today we are going to talk all about Dirty Down's new snot and gore. That's right, blood and snot, two of my favorite things. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V stuff. It's no secret that I'm a big fan of Dirty Down's rust and verdigree and moss products. I've used them a ton. You've seen them in videos that I've made on weathering. Uh, however, uh, they have recently released both gore, which is basically a stringy blood effect, and snot, which is, well, basically the same stuff but clear. And these are meant to replicate effects that we have traditionally done in the model world with something like an Uhu glue, U-H-U, if you're familiar with that. Um, my problem with Uhu glue was always that it was really difficult to work with. It wasn't very strong once it actually dried. It dried really fast. Like, I just, I had issues. And so today, we're going to look at these new gore and snot products and see if they're better. Uh, spoiler, they are. Uh, so let's head over to the desk and let's get some cool effects on some minis. All right, we're gonna start with the gore effect. This is the simplest thing. Uh, here I have one that I've already applied it to so you can kind of see what we're going for. Um, in general with these, what you're gonna need is the bottle and some kind of applicator. You could use like the back of your brush, but I would recommend like what I'm using here. Um, which is effectively like a very sharp stick you would use for like a shish kebab or something. Um, you can just buy a bunch of these uh, or, or anything that's like very sharp like this because you want to be able to get into tight spaces. Um, effectively, you just dip down into the mix and then get a glob of it. You will sometimes pull some up with it. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You can easily take the strings off. You'll see. Um, you then bring it over touch and push it and roll your stick onto the area of the miniature you want it, and then just start rolling and stretching it and touching it between the different places you want the blood strands to go between. It's really pretty easy. Now, here's where this really excels over traditional Uhu glue. First off, um, as you can see here, I don't always nail it on the first shot. Like, I don't always get it to hook or go, and you'll see that throughout the video. I don't always get it to stick properly how, where, exactly where and how I want. What's awesome, though, is with Uhu Glue, you had just, like, really a few seconds of working time. With this, it's longer. Probably closer to about 30 seconds you've got to work with the stuff where it remains soft and malleable. And so what's really cool is, as you'll see me doing here, after I place it, if I don't quite like what it is, I can just wipe the end of the stick off, which I do with my gloved hand or on the back of my hand or something like that, or on a paper towel, whatever. And I can then touch into it and stretch it down and pull it out and put it to, you know, push it and hook it to new places on the miniature. So it's just so much easier to uh, get those exact cool, really taut strands that you might want. Uh, I found this to be absolutely the biggest joy of working with this. Because I had that longer working time, I was able to really kind of place every bit of the end and the tips and the stickies and the strands exactly where I wanted them. Now, sometimes, as you'll see here, you will have some extra dangly strands. Um, honestly, I found these very easy to deal with. I would just grab them with my finger and pop them off. They just pulled right off, especially at the end of the working time. You just kind of get them right off of there. Um, as long as you don't let them fully dry laying flat on the miniature, if they're just kind of strands hanging out, they'll pop right off. No drama, no llama. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. So, all in all, you can see here I go through a couple different miniatures applying the blood effects in different ways. So, very, very easy um, to work with. It's I love that you can keep stretching it and move it even after it's done. Um, we'll talk about durability a little later on, so don't worry. Um, I did want to also show here that you can use this in tandem with more traditional like Blood for the Blood God to then like put some splatter or spots or things like that around. They're very much in the same color tone, uh, so they feel very naturalistic together. Um, so you can, you know, put some blood, like take blood for the blood god, splatter it on your miniature with a toothbrush and your finger, or just apply with a brush as I'm doing here. Um, I have a whole video on blood and gore effects. Um, you can check that out. Uh, but 
the, uh, I found that the two worked really well together and you can, you know, apply some other blood to the area. That way it feels much more natural. Because it's kind of weird if it's just like there's a giant blood strand and no blood splatter anywhere around it. So by using this in tandem with Blood for the Blood God, you get a really credible natural looking effect. And I liked it a lot. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's move to the snot. So for that, we're going to use a big dinosaur who's roaring. And, you know, it assumes he would have some, like, saliva in his, in his mouth. Um, and the sort of snot product is very clear base. And that is because, as you'll see, we can do other effects with it later. But for now, we're going to treat it straight. We're going to assume and just, just, just use it clear. Um, here again, I just do the same thing. Get my punji stick, my little, my little uh, pokey stick, put it in there, dip it in, and then start moving it between the teeth. And as you'll see here, this takes a couple of tries, a couple of different attempts at it, because I am like, it's a very small space and I'm working in and trying to use very little of it. But happily, what I was able to do, you'll notice a couple times here, I just mess up. Like I get a big glob way, in, or in, you know, in kind of other places where I don't want it. You'll see it again later. We'll talk about failure in a little bit as well. And I was just able to easily remove that, grab it, rehook my little stick into it, stretch it up, no problem, ready to go. And so you can take a couple passes at it because it was really easy that if I didn't get it right or didn't like it, I could just, while it was, uh, while it was drying but not yet solid, pop it right off of there and I'm good to go. Um, so after a few applications, I got a really nice clear saliva effect. And yet again here, I end up grabbing it, stretching it, working it out. Again, these are both basically the exact same stuff. You know, technically, if you don't mind painting over it, you'll see what I mean in a second. Really, you could just use the snot probably and it would be fine. And then you could just kind of paint it red. But the gore is nice because it does come all pre-colored. And I will say the blood effect is, is, it is on point. Like it does look very much like blood. Um, but I was able to get the, the snot around him and just have that like big glob of saliva look stretching between his teeth really easily. And all in all, I was really happy with how that came out after a few different attempts and stretches with the stick. Um, so next up, we're going to see what we can really do here. So now I have a Nurgle model, another excellent model to use these kinds of effects on. Basically, uh, Nurgle is like the home of Dirty Down. Their entire range is just like made for everything Nurgle. Um, so here I've got uh, a model with a big, giant, open, gaping mouth again, of course. And I thought, let's, let's see what we can do here. So again, I start out just with the thing. And what I want to talk about here is, is kind of if you fail with this. Because it is still, you know, you're still working with a sticky product that's kind of inexact. And you'll see one of these applications with that. I just like, I duff it, okay? And get it in the wrong place. Now, I could have cut that and just like not shown you that I messed up. But I don't think there's any value in that ever. I always like to show you guys when I mess up too. Because what I ended up doing was just kind of pulling that away putting it on the back of my hand and then uh, went back in and then re-stretched into some of that with uh, the, my pokey stick. And I was able to actually use a little bit of that to re-stretch out again, pick that up, move it, replace it, re-stretch it out, reattach it. And I found again, that long working time. I know I'm really driving it home, but like the difference between the three to five seconds you have with Ooglu, like it's, it's, I might be exaggerating slightly, but it's very short. And the much longer working time, like 30 seconds here, really did let me correct the effect to get it exactly how I wanted every time. And when at all the times where I had just a little bit spill over the side or go somewhere I didn't want, it was very easy to just grab a hold of it, pull it off. So I get it all stretched out on him. We get him in a good place after a couple tries again. He's got some nice saliva. Uh, fine. I then go ahead and grab some Nurgle's Rot. Uh, so this is just like the, this is the technical stuff from GW that's meant to be like goopy, gross Nurgle guts, pus, right? Whatever. And um, I let it dry. So your next logical question is, how long do you let this dry? Um, I let it sit for about two minutes, something give or take. Let's call it two or three minutes. I didn't start a clock or anything but a short amount of time is the point. And in that time, uh, it solidified. I'll show you the durability test in just a minute. Don't worry, we're getting there. 
but it solidified and it was completely paintable. And as you can see, I then go in with my Nurgle's Rot, apply that over the top, and we're good to go. Um, it's, I found it really cool. It's solid. I could bead up the little technical paint on it if I wanted. So if I want like little droplets or something and, but otherwise he just now has some really gross snot in his mouth, basically. That's all sick colored. Um, I did it here with the technical paint. Keep in mind, you could paint this or stain this with an ink or any kind of paint. I will say that generally using something that's a little glossy is what I would recommend. Um, so you could like mix a, a paint with a little bit of gloss medium, touch it over there. That's going to give you your best results. So whatever kind of strange liquid or color you want, you could get at through any mix of ink, paint, and or gloss medium to really give it a nice coat and turn it that color. Uh, so uh, this, it, it just, it was super easy. Didn't break any strands. Even the hyper thin ones took the paint very easily. No problem. I'm not saying you couldn't break them. I mean, if you karate chop them, I'm sure they'll break. But uh, for the most part, it was it was fine. Uh, my next test was to go in and say, can I actually reinforce the blood effect? So let's go back to the initial uh, ghoul. And uh, now I take some of the blood and I'm going to build on top of the dried blood. I wanted to do this to, to show, like to build out some areas, to show blood droplets, to show some actual like mass. And I found it was really easy. Just touching some cool droplets along the strand. Again, the strands held up very well. And I was able to create uh, just some nice effects where he's stretching it apart and there's maybe like a chunk or a big drop of blood or something like that. So actually stacking these two products together gave me a really cool result I was very happy with. Lastly, I do just want to show you the durability of this thing. So at this point, these while, while I'm doing this test, they've cured for, I don't know, uh, you know, anywhere from like five to ten minutes, depending on where we were, because I went through all these fairly quickly. It just doesn't take a long time to apply, obviously. So let's say five to ten minutes. I took my stick, and you can see me tapping on it. It feels very solid. And I actually just rested the stick on top of some of the strands, and it stays there didn't depress the strand. It just balanced. I like, I just balanced the little stick on it. Now that little pokey stick is not the heaviest thing in the world, but those strands are not the thickest thing in the world. Uh, I, you know, so it like, it is pretty darn durable and solid. Again, if you were to like grab a hold of it with your hand and apply pressure, of course they would break. You can still pop them or, you know, all, like chip them off if you want to. Like that can happen. It's not concrete, but for normal wear and tear of handling your models, I think you'd actually be just fine as long as you do a little bit of care to not like literally grab and squeeze at that point. All in all, I found the durability, the solidity of the thing to be beyond my expectations. I thought they were going to be, you know, this is again a challenge with sort of traditional Uhu glue was it's fairly fragile in the end. Um, it's also glue, and if you messed it up and you tried to take it off, like, all the paint was coming with it. This I didn't find that ever happening. Never lifted paint, none of that stuff. Um, I'm sure if I, like, let it fully cure and then ripped it off, I would lift paint. Let me say that. Um, but my experience here with just, like, moving it while it's workable, never lifted paint. Uh, and so, but the durability is good. So if you're... Uh, you know, worried about it being on your tabletop models and is it going to just break instantly the second a strong breeze comes through or you accidentally bump it with another model? My answer is a strong no. Uh, it very much has the durability that it can survive most of your tabletop stuff, assuming you don't store your models by just sweeping them off the table into a giant plastic bin like some kind of savage. Uh, so, you know, I was very happy with that overall. So my read on the Dirty Down products is the new Gore and Snot is I really like them. Um, you know, full disclosure, uh, they offered me a little promo code that I can use. You can find that down below. If you want to pick these up, you can save 10% off. That does, as an affiliate link, give me a little kickback. But I'm going to be honest, lots of people have, have I, you know, given me those codes. And if I don't like their product, I just don't review it. Uh, I really liked using these. It was a lot of fun. They remained workable. The effects were credible and solid. I like that you can paint over them easily, and I like how durable they were in the long term. These are all the things I'm looking for in this kind of effect. Uh, and so as a product, it works for me. And I thought it was very well made for what they wanted to do. 
um, like they achieved the goal. It is the best type of this thing and certainly better than the past homemade solutions I've used to do the same. So all in all, it gets a big thumbs up from me. Like I said, if you're interested, there is an affiliate link down below. You can save 10% on picking these up. Um, and that does give the channel a small kickback, which I deeply appreciate. Uh, but I thank you very much for watching this. If you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions about this stuff I didn't answer, for example, Vince, do I have to shake the living crap out of this beforehand or warm it up like I do with the other Dirty Down products? No, you don't. This works more or less at, it is room stable, and I used it, picked it up, it just sat there for a week, picked it up, used it. So, how about that? Um, but if you've got other questions, drop them down below. Always happy to answer every question asked. Uh, like I said, if you want to support the channel, check out those affiliate links, not only for the Dirty Down stuff, but for everything down there. It doesn't cost you anything extra, in fact, it often saves you money, and it really does help support the channel. Uh, there's also, of course, our Patreon, focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.